Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. A former army captain is taken to a maximum security underground prison where he is not allowed to dream at night and will have to face his worst nightmares to escape from this place. Today we will recap the movie, Fortress, from 1992. In a dystopian future on the United States border, Captain John Brennick and his wife Karen are trying to get out of the country by passing through the highly protected barrier by army soldiers. One of the soldiers stops the car and orders them to get off for inspection. John and Karen proceed to the counter and show their barcodes on their arms for immigration to verify their identities, then walk to the baggage inspection area. While the soldier was making jokes about Karen's bags, alarms goes off, indicating that a woman's luggage has been denied. The soldiers take her by force to another sector, making the couple even more tense with the situation, after all they could be the next targets at any minute. Still everything seemed to have gone well. But when John goes to put the luggage back in the trunk, he is surprised by the search guard, saying that they left one behind. At that moment, the man looks at Karen and sees a piece of her uniform sticking out of the collar of her jacket. He discovers that she is a fugitive as she is wearing a deflector uniform. John breaks the soldier's arm and knocks him out. The guard triggers the code blue for fugitives. The couple quickly take out a few more guards and flee past the gate together. However, several dogs are released to catch them. Since there would be no chance for the two of them, John decides to stay behind to save Karen. The dogs jump on him and bite his arm to immobilize him. And inevitably, he was completely surrounded by the troops and was trapped. In the truck transporting the detainees, everyone is crammed into a container. A digital voice warns them that they are about to enter the maximum security prison fortress. From the outside, you can see that the place is totally isolated within a desert. In other words, escape is impossible. Then we find out that John has been sentenced to 31 years in prison because his wife has become pregnant again, and in this reality one child per woman is allowed. The transport finally stops at the prison's unloading station. Everyone is forced to remove their clothes and go through a barred corridor into the shed. On a TV, Warden Poe informs them of the terrible laws of the prison. They are all now the property of men tell and every inmate will have his thoughts monitored from now on. John is forced to stick his head into a bizarre device, which closes around his neck. The machine couples in his mouth and launches a control capsule that goes into his intestines. If the detainee crosses yellow lines he will feel terrible pain, if he crosses red lines he will die. A few minutes later while everyone is heading to their new cells, a gentleman that John met in the transport truck goes into despair because he has claustrophobia and tries to run for help. As he crosses the yellow line, the system causes him such excruciating pain that the man screams and crawls across the floor, but eventually crosses the red line. His intestines begin to swell and his abdomen explodes completely, causing his instant elimination. John is shocked by this, but just follows along with the other inmates. The fortress is 33 floors deep, the elevator goes down and the man could see the size of that place and the impressive number of inmates. Upon reaching his floor, he walks out along with a man named Gomez across the platform, being completely stared at by the inmates on that floor. The pair realize that the platform has been retracted. In other words, they are now definitely stuck in that sector. A robot attached to the ceiling orders them to climb the stairs and follow it down the hall. When they get to their beds, another inmate soon bars them saying that they will not accept anyone else in that cell. The robot starts a countdown to kill the bald man who defies his order, but the man says it's a joke when he realizes he would be brutally killed. The duo then enters the cell and then it is locked. Just out of curiosity, John throws a piece of clothing and the containment laser burns the cloth instantly. The lights will be turned off in a few moments and before they go to bed, inmate Abraham tells John not to dream in his sleep, and the reason for this will become quite clear. By dawn, the man had blacked out and the security robot decides to scan his mind, revealing to the control center that he is having a pleasant dream about his wife. The system immediately activates the punishment, and John wakes up screaming with terrible pain. As has already been said, it is forbidden to dream. The next day while working on rock extraction, John asks his cellmate D-Day about the zombified appearance of an inmate. The man says that the old man tried to escape and ended up brainwashed, turning into an almost vegetative being. Suddenly, John hears Gomez screaming for help. He rushes to the scene and sees his colleague being assaulted by the bloody Stiggs and another violent criminal. The man punches the bald man in the face, but when he tries to attack the other gang member, he realizes that is the dreaded Maddox that everyone has been talking about. The madman grabs John by the neck and throws him away. Eventually, they suffer terrible pain as punishment for the fight and end up in solitary confinement, a cramped cell with laser walls. The problem is that there is no way to lie down or sit up. Until the one responsible for causing the fight turns himself in, they will stay there. Gomez can't take the heat anymore and is almost fainting. 
If he turns Maddox in he will be killed by the man later, so John decides to take the blame to help his colleague. The robot orders him to immediately go and talk to Director Poe. When he arrives in his office he finds Abraham shaving the boss. The man says he knows that John was the commander of the Black Berets and lost his entire troop on a mission, but he won't want to lose one more person. And to John's utterly despairing surprise, he reveals on his TV that they have also captured Karen. The director orders them to activate intestination on the woman and also on John, giving him a very clear message, don't get yourself into trouble anymore. Back on his floor, the captain goes to Abraham and asks where the women's wing is and finds out that the first two upper floors A and B is where his wife will be. Meanwhile, Karen is in the cell with another pregnant woman. The woman is completely distraught, for she knows that once her baby is born, he will be taken from her and she will never be able to see him again. The doctors show up to take her away and in the maternal impulse to defend the child, both women attack the men. But obviously the pregnant woman couldn't get very far. Other doctors capture her and drag her screaming into another sector. In the men's ward while walking down the stairs, John is attacked by surprise by Maddox. The man begins to beat him up and tries to force his head into the cell's laser. However, John counters and manages to get away. Gomez jumps on the criminal's back to try to put him out, but ends up being thrown to the ground. John once again begins to receive several violent blows, and is thrown so hard onto the platform that he hangs, almost falling off the huge cliff. To take Maddox by surprise, he holds on to the structures below the platform floor and when the crazy man sticks his head out he gets a supreme kick. John goes up again to continue the fight. They both trade blows and injure each other. The problem is when Maddox gives the captain a bear hug and begins to crush him painfully. John even manages to get away with a headbutt, but to help him further, the platform begins to be retracted. To get out of that situation, the man resorts to biting technique and throws a few more punches and kicks the giant until he leaves him hanging from the platform. Director Poe orders John to finish his opponent and throw him down there, but obviously the man refuses to kill anyone and helps his opponent get back up on the bridge. All the inmates start shouting the name John Brennick, which makes the warden even more angry. The platform stopped retracting just as the pair were about to fall. But make no mistake, this was not a lifesaver. A proton cannon descends to the height of the two and locks its aim on Maddox. A single shot was able to blow a hole through the man's torso, leaving John in a complete state of shock. He was to be next, but when Karen shouted his name from above, Poe decided to activate random intestinations to prevent any mutiny and spared the captain's life by thinking of a new plan for Karen. John falls to the floor due to his severe pain and finds the intestinal capsule that came loose from Maddox, he takes the opportunity to pick it up and hands it to Gomez, asking him to keep it safe. Karen is taken away by the nurses to give her husband an errand. John is strapped to a metal arch with several electrodes on his head. They are happy to be seeing each other, but his wife begs John not to get into any more trouble, the director has told her that he will suffer something terrible if he continues. But that was just idle talk, after all as soon as Karen is taken from the room, the lights go out and John starts spinning in various directions on the hoop, starting the brainwashing. Countless psychedelic images begin to appear in his mind, such as a baby carriage with a snake inside, and other terrible things as a way of making him totally disturbed to the point of wanting to gouge his eyes out. John stays three days in a row without stopping suffering that terrible situation. Poe tells Karen that no one has ever lasted until the fourth day, but there is a way for her to save her husband. Until the end of her sentence, she was to voluntarily become the warden's partner and stay in his quarters. Obviously the woman refuses the macabre proposal, but seeing her husband suffer so much in this way, she despairs and ends up accepting Poe's terrible proposal. John is released from the brainwashing chamber and taken back to his cell. The man is completely zombified. His friends realize that his mind has now died and only his body still remains standing. Karen, on the other hand, is able to quickly spy on the warden monitoring the inmate's dreams and notes a code he uses in his chair to intestinate a prisoner. Poe realizes that the woman is spying on him and scolds her, saying that if she touches a finger on his beloved Zed, the artificial intelligence panel, she will feel unimaginable pain. Back in the cell, Stiggs is burning John's hand with a match, to test if he really doesn't feel anything anymore. The man is unresponsive, and has to be saved by Gomez and D-Day, who make the man stop. During the early morning hours, Karen wakes up and realizes that Poe is not around, but upon finding him she has a totally bizarre revelation. He is plugged into the Zed system, undergoing a kind of amino acid recharge. The man is actually a creepy cyborg, who neither sleeps nor feeds. To make matters worse, he reveals that he was once a men tell baby. Meaning babies taken from their mothers become cyborgs. Some time passes and John is still totally zombified. Abraham tries to help his friend somehow, 
saying that he has seen Karen and her belly is already very apparent. But John has no reaction, only tears stream down his face. Karen finally had an idea to escape and gave the cyborg some booze. And since obviously his system is not used to that, he ended up falling into the trap and collapsed on the floor. The woman goes to the control room and sits in Zed's chair. Using the codes she memorized weeks earlier, she manages to find John in his cell through the camera. John is in despair in his dreams as a child. His wife tries to reconnect with him, pulling him out of a deep hole, making him get rid of that zombification. Meanwhile the director is waking up again and starts calling for Karen. She needs to interrupt the connection with John's dreams in order not to be caught using Zed. And fortunately the plan was successful. Captain John has returned to reality in his cell. His friends are surprised and do not understand how this is possible. He discovers that he has been a zombie for four months, and the terrible news is that Karen is living in Warden Poe's quarters. When he finds this out, John goes into a rage and asks Abraham to help him get into the Warden's room and pass a message to Karen. Since Abraham works inside, this would be pretty easy. The man follows the plan and approaches Karen discreetly to say that he is her husband's cellmate. He informs her that John is well again and it was time for them to act to get out of there. D-Day asks John to let him look at the gut ship that had fallen out of Maddox. The man is an electronics expert and now he just needs to know a way to disable the system, because the thing is totally unstable. One wrong electrical charge and boom. Their bellies explode into thousands of pieces. Karen decides to put her plan into practice and goes to a hologram projector in Poe's room and grabs a diamond that was attached to the object, and almost being caught by the director, having to hide the jewel in her mouth to escape. She goes back to Abraham and asks the man to take the diamond to John. We then discover that this jewel is a holographic lens that reveals the complete map of the prison. But to activate it, a laser must be fired at the diamond. D-Day has an excellent idea and using the frame of his glasses, he puts the diamond in place of one of the lenses and uses the lasers in the cell to reproduce the map. So they discover a heating duct in the under construction sector that would lead them to the exit, only the laser ends up overheating the frame and D-Day drop it down with the diamond outside the cell. John quickly tries to reach out and grab it, before the robot sees the object. He ends up hitting his shoulder on the laser and gets a terrible burn, but narrowly manages to pull the frame back. Abraham the next day takes the jewel back to the director's office, and sneaks it into the projector. But Poe realizes that someone had tampered with it, because it had a stain on it that was disturbing the projection. Karen would soon be blamed for something, but Abraham lies by saying that he wiped the object to remove the dust. Even though he suffered an absurd scolding, he successfully deflected suspicion. Abraham warns his friend that Karen is being blackmailed by the director into divorcing John and staying with him forever, so they couldn't wait any longer to run away. D-Day says that he has found a way to deactivate the chips, but it will be very painful and bizarre. Using Maddox's chip magnet, it is possible to stick it in their bellies and connect to the chip inside their bodies and guide it through their intestines, stomach, esophagus and out through their mouths. But of course this has a danger of blowing everything up and making them into pieces. Well, the first volunteer is Stiggs. Since no one likes him, nobody would care if something went wrong. D-Day begins the procedure and the pain is terrible. As the chip goes up, the pain intensifies, until the object locks in the esophagus and makes him have a seizure. John squeezes his stomach and Stiggs spits out the chip at once. Intelligence Zed warns Poe that he needs to see something urgent on the mainframe. He is presented with the recordings of the day Karen and Abraham stole the diamond map without him knowing. Because of this, Poe is being ousted by the top directors and will be replaced within 24 hours. This leaves him completely overcome with hatred. After removing all the chips, John and his colleagues create a fake riot in the construction area as part of the plan. The camera identifies the inmates and triggers the intestination, but since the chips are not inside them, they end up blowing up the pipe where they were placed. Poe warns Zed Intelligence that he has fallen into a trap and orders her to activate mass intestination affecting the entire prison. John's group makes their way through the heating pipe, but the steam is turned on and prevents them from heading for the exit, forcing them to run back. In his desperation to avoid being hit by the hot jets, Stiggs becomes careless and receives a blast right in the face, burning him severely. The security robots warn the group that they must surrender immediately or they will open fire. Stiggs decides that he will surrender and appears at the opening of the pipe, but is completely machine gunned. Meanwhile, Abraham goes to Poe's room to get Karen out, but as they try to leave they are approached by the warden, who tells Zed to intestinate the inmate. To Abraham's surprise and happiness, he had already removed his chip, which makes him totally immune. The man tries to attack the warden, but since the man is a cyborg he resists any punches and grabs the inmate by the neck. Karen runs to break a pane of glass and tries to use a shard of glass to pierce Poe. 
He ends up letting go of Abraham, but comes straight at the woman and shatters the glass in her hands. In the pipe, a burst of fire is shot through the hole and an armed robotic arm begins to enter the plumbing. John pulls the thing in and realizes it was a highly technological robot soldier. He attacks the thing with his shovel until he opens its helmet and reveals a totally scary cyborg head. The group decides to cut off Mega Man's armed arm to use as a defense. With this, they manage to get out through the hole in the pipe and shoot several cyborgs that were waiting for them. The group must advance while dodging gunfire and toxic gases fired by the robot security guards. D-Day ends up being grabbed by a fallen cyborg and falls behind. With a pickaxe, he hits one of the thing's eyes, but since his glasses have broken it is he who is totally blind and is left screaming for Captain John. Just as the cyborg was about to finish him off, John comes running up and saves him from the proton cannon shot that blows up the cyborg. The trio dodge the cannon and climb up its structure, which is rising toward the upper floors. The inmates go wild at the sight of the three fugitives in full action. When they reach the top, John uses the gun to cut a hole in the wall and enter the principal's office. They surrender the damn man, but discover that Abraham was already dead. Poe shows by the monitoring system that Karen has been forcibly taken to the operating room and only the baby will make it out alive. John threatens him and orders him to cancel the surgery, but it is too late Zed does not take orders when his director is at gunpoint. Therefore, the group decides to personally go to where Karen is. As they leave Poe's room, the system classifies him as a traitorous threat and blows him into millions of pieces with a proton shot. Since they would now be cornered by the approaching troops, D-Day asks John to take him to the center chair, he needs to hack Zed and take it down. The man breaks into the system and executes a bizarre internal flaw to collapse it. But before he can finish his plan, the cyborgs invade the room and shoot D-Day in the back. John destroys all the security guards with his gun, but his friend only had time to press the last button to complete his invasion, and ends up dying in Gomez's arms. Karen was about to have her belly sawed out by the butcher doctors, but the system goes on alert what the bug created by D-Day and messes everything up. The cyborgs, the doors, the lights, everything goes completely crazy. The inmates start a mass escape. Karen takes advantage of the distraction and kicks the surgeons away. John arrives just in time and surrenders the damned, managing to get his wife out of there. The two make their way to the truck where Gomez is waiting. They manage to start the vehicle but the main gate is closing and as they pass at full speed they get the vehicle stuck in it. But with a little more force, John unhooks the container and they are finally able to get out of that hell. They follow the long road in the desert, but it is not over yet. Halfway there, they have to stop at an abandoned stable, because Karen is giving birth. What nobody knew is that Zed would self-activate the truck's system and start a search for the inmates. When he spotted Gomez in front of him, he sped off and ran over the man. John sees the truck coming up and moves his wife out of the way, firing several times at the possessed vehicle. The truck turns around and heads back in his direction. The captain fires incessantly, but his gun locks up and he accidentally activates the flamethrower, turning the machine into a fireball, which unbelievably crashes into the stable where Karen was and explodes completely. John despairs for his wife and son, and approaches the rubble in disbelief. But he hears a baby crying, and as he advances a few meters, he finds his wife with their child in her arms. She has miraculously managed to pull herself away and give birth by herself. And so the escape from the fortress was complete.